Hello. Hi everyone. Can people hear me or am I not able to hear the people? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, Hello. cool. Awesome. I think I was using the wrong speaker as well. So it's very great. Cool. All that's fixed. Plus keep on problems. <laughs> All right, let's wait a couple minutes. Okay. All right. How was everyone's um coupon experience? Whether you were you were there in the coach? Oh, I only got to see it from from afar. Looked like it was fun though. I think it's good to see a couple of folks in person as well, but I think a lot of the engagement was happening on Slack and on Mac as well. Okay, so I'm going to put the meeting notes and the chat as usual. So, um, please put in your name. Um, if you have any updates or anything you want to talk about, please also include that um, beside your name and attendance. Um, and also if you're a new member, and this is your first time joining, or you haven't introduced yourself to the group before, um, please go ahead and yeah, indicate that you're a new member as well. Hello everyone. This is uh, Karthik. This is my first meeting in tag security. Um, at the outset, I'd like to thank uh, Pushkar for uh, introducing me to tag security and uh, uh, pointing out the right resources. Um, I'm one of the maintainers of the Litmus Chaos project, which is a CNCF sandbox project. And um, we've just gone ahead and created a self-assessment uh, document for this project. As part of uh, the application uh, towards incubation. And um, I, I have created an issue um, that basically talks about uh, the details of this assessment, which I'm posting on the uh, chat of uh, uh, this meeting. So very glad to be here and uh, glad to meet you all and uh, would love to take your guidance on uh, the improving the security aspect of this project. Awesome. Welcome, Karthik. Yeah, that's, Thank you. Um, we'll, I think hopefully we'll have some time at the end of it to, to go through the uh, Linux chaos and we can do like uh, later on in the meeting, do like a short five minutes introduction about it. And you know, we can probably go ahead and figure out offline. Um, you know, take a closer look as well. Sure. Thank you. Awesome. So I think most have kind of trickled in now. So I'm going to start with the usual. Um, so hi everyone, uh, this is a the tech security, CNCF tech security team meeting. Uh, as it's with most of the CNCF events and meeting, this follows the CNCF for conduct. Um, it can be found in the repo, both in the CNCF as well as the tech security repo. Um, we will need at least one person to help volunteer and subscribe to ensure that all the action items and primary content is recorded. 
Um, the meeting is also recorded. Please do take note of that. Um, if anyone is willing to scribe, that would be great. Um, you can just go ahead and the meeting notes and write your name under the scribes. Thank you, Ash, so much for helping to scribe today. Um, cool. And yeah, um, put your name down, put your affiliations, and things like that looks like everyone's going to be way ahead of me on this. So. Um, yeah, so I think today's um, just before we, we go through the different um, parts of the, the meeting today is going to kind of be more for uh, kind of a roundup of KubeCon, just some thoughts scattered from the community around KubeCon, some of the things that happened during that uh, the event, as well as, you know, I think we would we have several new members here. So I also want to be able to um, give some time for people to introduce themselves. Um, which brings us right to that first agenda item, which is remembers. Um, so Karthika, uh, thanks so much for doing the intro. Um, you, which company did you say that you were at again? Yeah, I work as a uh, uh, part of Chaos Native. That is the okay. organization which is one of the uh, contributing orgs to witness. Awesome. Um, cool. Do we have any other new new folks in the call today? I'm new. Uh, Tim Routine. Hi, this um, is Thomas. Awesome. Many new faces. Let's let's start with Tim and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, do a quick introduction and then we'll go around. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um so yeah, I uh, Found out about you at KubeCon and um, thought I'd come along to uh, see what you do. That's it, really. Awesome. Do you want to share a little bit about uh, your background? Or I'm a, interested in? Oh, sure. Uh, I'm a, a GCP security architect um, working for PA Consulting, and I uh, do stuff with financial services. Uh, organizations so obviously got an interest in um, cloud native security. Awesome. Welcome to, uh, I think you should also probably talk with Michael Lieberman here as so. well. <laughs> he runs currently runs a financial services user group. Yeah. Or maybe you guys already know each other. Um uh, cool. Welcome to uh let's see. I'm gonna just go by the chat. Oh, so next we have uh, Craig. Hi, that's me. Um, my name's Craig Jellick. Uh, coming here, I'm, I work for uh, SUSE by way of Rancher Labs. Um, and just, uh, just trying to kind of, just join to kind of, I don't know, learn about what this group does and how my work can pot potentially, you know, be involved. Awesome. Okay. Um, Scott. <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, I'm Scott. Aurora. I'm a founder at Chain Guard. Checking it out. See if I can help. Welcome. And thanks for all the awesome t-shirts that you guys have been giving out to your class. Awesome. Um, and Thomas, sorry, I'm going to get, go back around to you again. Hi, this is uh, Thomas Underhill, and I am with VMware. I work very closely with Andreas Vega. So he invited me. So look forward to contributing. Oh, nice, nice to meet you, Thomas. Um, let's see, do we have anyone else that I missed up on? Most folks here look familiar. Um, I'm not sure whether I've seen George. George, are you new here or have I just been sleeping? No, it's uh, George. Hello, everyone. I'm working oh, okay. on the security assessment for Cloud Custodian, which is in the sandbox. And uh, just saying hello. Welcome, everyone. Awesome. 
I think there's also a second charge in the chat. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. I was gonna ask you for your update anyway. So, uh, okay. I, I think if not. I think these uh, um, welcome all new members. Um, good to see you here. Hope that uh, there'll be something interesting that that we have discussions on, and that you know we can find something that we can contribute on together. Next. Cool. Um, okay, next is on triage. Uh, we don't have that today. Um, we have the meeting, um, the APAC meeting anymore. Um, there hasn't been any POC updates um, because of TripCon, so we're going to skip all that. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the list to see whether anyone has anything to talk about. Um, okay, let's cut it. Cool. Um, no additional updates besides um, the chaos engineer one, which we'll talk about later. Um, so, in, in case um, you haven't noticed, uh, our, usually we have two different types of meeting. Um, we have these things called working sessions. We have presentations as well. Working sessions are kind of a way for us to get together to um, both be able to kind of start coordinating on different projects, getting updates on different projects. As well as you know, sometimes we have a lot of discussions on uh, certain topics. You know, someone brings up, oh, what should we do about secure defaults or something, and then we spend like fifteen minutes to kind of talk about it. Um, usually ends up opening issue at the end of the day, <laughs> and then maybe becomes a project. Uh, but yeah, so generally these are how working sessions uh, um, end up end up um, um, happening as we go through the different updates. We kind of highlight one or two issues that are new or issues that uh, we kind of want to bring up, which are in the roadmap. Um, and so this next part of the meeting, um, we're going to just go through the different updates for the different groups. And then at the end of the meeting, we're going to touch on new issues like the chaos engineer one that we talked about. Um, we also have presentation meetings, which are, um, you know, the kind of we just go through a quick stand up and then we have a presentation from either a project or um, someone that just wants to talk about security or their work, um, what they've been working on, and then we just have a discussion about that. Um, so each meeting is either usually either working session or presentation, um, and that can be seen kind of if you if you're curious, you can kind of look through the, the meeting notes that we have in the chat to kind of have to feel around what those things are like. Um, all right, so let's continue with today's um, project updates. So um, I see that Michael, you, you mentioned that you have an update for the, the flashing of the group. Yep. Um, so uh, pretty simple update. So we're, we're uh, finishing up the first uh, version of it. Uh, there's obviously some cleanup. There's a few other things that are getting done, but most likely by the end of this week or maybe a little into early next week, um, it should be all uh, done. Um, just mostly cleaning up some some diagrams, uh, some uh, rewording of a couple of things and, and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's all um, getting done. The other thing that is currently in the middle of sort of getting uh, sorted out is we do have a prototype implementation that's based on a demo that... Um, my team and I had kind of worked on and, you know, we we're looking to sort of, you know, donate that code and figure out whatever it needs to happen in order to kind of get that sort of uh, accepted as something that the CNCF can then use. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it on from that front. So yeah, if anybody has any thoughts uh, right now, it's mostly just um, like little tweaks here or there, or if somebody wants to sort of, you know, raise some big red flag, that's, that's sort of the only stuff that we're really kind of looking for at, at this point. But um, yeah, it's coming together quite nicely. Uh, a lot of good diagrams and, and whatnot are being added there. Looking definitely for, for other folks to just sort of um, read through it, uh, see if there's anything, you know, if it's anything sort of um, that isn't a minor correction or whatever, it, maybe we can start looking at that for a version two or whatever. But um, we're also starting to ramp up uh, trying to look at that reference implementation, or sorry, I should say prototype implementation, and what we might be able to um, 
you know, if, if folks can help out with that and so on. Uh, a lot of the my time over this the next few days is going to be spent uh, cleaning up that code, making sure that it's clear that we separate out the examples from the actual sort of installation of the the tools and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's coming together. That's it for me. Uh, M Michael, can you share these resources in the chat so we can put them in the notes so people can uh, access? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So let me go do that right now. So first, I will share the actual document. So that's the actual sort of uh, uh, reference architecture document, and then um, as far as the while we're kind of working through all the um, whatever, uh, I don't know how, how I would describe it. Just like all, all the paperwork and whatever else is required in order to kind of get this to become an actual CNCF thing. This is where it, uh, the secure software factory prototype implementation lives. Um, and just, yeah. So th those are the two, um, thing. Um, also if, if you just want to get involved with it. Uh, I think the best way probably is the, the Slack channel, right? Oh, yes, correct. So there is a Slack channel. I will um, copy the just the name of it. Uh... I, I got it. This oh, OK. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Um, any, any other um, questions, thoughts on that? Okay, so next one is the audio recordings. Um, is there anyone here that wants to give an update on that? Um, we have serverless um, around now. Do you want to give a quick update on Robert? I don't know. Oh, I'm not sure if he's working at that right now. Yeah, the serverless um, um, paper, I think the India and the APAC team are working on it. Um, we have a sync up set up for later this week. Um, okay. What happened is while we were still working on this paper, the CSA paper came out, right? This of how to mm -hmm. architect secure serverless applications. So we don't want to duplicate content, obviously. Uh, so we need to rescope and reset the direction as to what we are producing and how will that add value. So that is the sync up meeting later this week. Um, Ashish has set that up and we'll go from there. Thank you. Um, okay, security tells who has John on the call. Okay, so, so let's on that one. Um, security reviews, um, Matthew. I thought it's on Matthew here. There we go. Unmuted wow. myself. Uh, yeah, I awesome. finally got finally got the recurring time slot so I can join these again. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's a little bit uh, left to do on the um, cloud custodian one, like some remaining edits, and then like the markdown copy of the final uh, canonical uh, self assessment, and then commit those and wrap that up. Uh, I'm also sending out a call for reviewers for the Argo review now that. Uh, KubeCon has passed and we have some more cycles going around. So I've updated the ticket for that on GitHub and I'll go paste it in the chat here uh, when I go on mute. And uh, yeah, we could use some uh, reviewers and a reviewing lead. And beyond that, I'm putting together a batch of documentation updates, just uh, roles and stuff like that for the um, tag security, Git repo in general. And uh, I think we have a separate meeting in like an hour or so where I can go over that in some more detail. And that's yeah. it for me. Awesome. Thank you, Matthew. Um, yeah, I just uh, post, post the question in the chat. And for those folks that are new, um, if you haven't seen the pattern, basically, we have issues for everything. If you don't get involved with anything, just comment on the issue you know, and, and we'll figure it out. Um, OK, cool. So con uh, controls group, security controls. Yeah. Um, John, Justin, I guess, Frederick, 
I don't have a, a current update. Um, so, all right, I'll think up with them. Um, cool. So, I think the last one we have is cognitive security map. Um, Ash, you wanna talk quickly about this one? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so just to give folks an idea of what this is. So the stag had first developed a cloud native security white paper, uh, which provided information about uh, building, distributing, deploying and running cloud native applications. And so what the cloud native map, it kind of builds on that white paper and it tries to give an interactive medium for consumption of that white paper. So imagine giving you some real world projects which conform to each of those different sections like distribution or deploy and runtime. So it's it's supposed to be a practitioner's guide uh, to provide you more practical data on how to actually use uh, these cloud native projects and where they fit in in the different pipelines. So currently we have an initial version of the map out. It's at CNS map dot netlify dot app and now what we're doing is we are working on a newer version of that map to kind of uh, join these different phases on how you can move from one phase to another and so that's the work we're gonna that's the second phase of the map that we're working on and we'll probably kick start that project in like the next couple of weeks so we are going to need uh, volunteers to help us with that project as well and we'll provide more information um, in the future meetings on that so for folks interested, uh, we'll post the GitHub issue as well in the meeting notes. So check out that issue and check out the CNS map as well online on cnsmap.netlify.app. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Ash. Um, I posted the, the link at the issue as well. Uh, so folks can go check it out. Cool. Um, so it looks like I think one of the things that I wanted to, to kind of cover a little bit before we get into the things is, um, I think first for, for new members, you know, if you have any questions about the group, uh, what are some things that you have thoughts on, you know, you're, you're looking for something specific or what, you know, just general questions about the group. And not restricted to new members. If you're an existing member and you want to kind of know a little bit more about a certain uh, aspect of the group, um, you can spend the next few minutes to kind of just go through that. Um, if not, what I would do is I would do a quick run through on. Um, you usually give this kind of like quick overview for every time you have post to talk, which hasn't been a lot. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I will quickly show um, how the group is organized. Um, and then um, if there's any questions that come on the way, feel free to interrupt. Does everyone see my browser? Yes. Yep. Cool. So um, main aspect of the group is we kind of all just run out of the repo. Everything, um, basically everything that the group works on ends up being in the repo. Um, so we have kind of different photos that you see, um, but just quickly going through, right? So we have the, um, the readme, um, really, this is information on the meeting, which is what we have, we're having today. Another important thing to take a look at, to, to, to take a look at is the Slack and communications. Um, so those are already not on the Slack channel. We have a Slack channel. We also have a mailing list, and we have an email list for the leads and chats as well, in case you have any questions um, directed to the leadership. Um, and yeah, and we also have a new members page. So this new members page, I believe was recently updated, um, talks a little bit about, you know, what are the things that kind of get started with, 
um, come join the meetings, come join the Slack channel, look at what kind of like contribution guidelines or things like that. Um, but yeah, the, the three things that we recommend uh, folks do if you want to get involved is uh, join the meeting, uh, which most of you already have here, so that's great. Um, so express your thoughts on any issue that you find interesting. Uh, I'll touch a little bit on this soon. Um, and then you can choose an issue where it covers it. So, so as you can see, like a lot of how the group works is around the issues of the PRs that are on GitHub. Um, basically, whenever something comes up during the meeting, it will end up getting you know, greater issues so we can discuss it. Um, yeah, so if we look at kind of like issues, right? This is really where like the meat of everything that goes on with the group. Um, so generally for new members, what we do is we, we recommend, you know, filtering for um, how one the first issue. Um, right. And basically we have a couple of things that here and generally what you can do is, you know, you can, you can for example, this one, cause it is a great map B2. Uh, you can just say, you know, I'm happy to help people just post and then um, we will have a process to kind of like jumps up the, the, the process, right? So if you see that, you know, so the issue is kind of getting traction and so then um, uh, folks that want to work on something or there's a lot of comments on a particular issue, we bring it to this working session meeting to discuss about it. We talk about, okay, maybe we should make this into a project and so on and how people will follow through that, right? Um, you can also create new issues. So if you hit new issue, you can see that there are a couple of things, right? Um, there's joint security review. Uh, so this is if you are a project owner that wants to do a security assessment, such security review the tag, oops, um, you can uh, create this issue. If you want to present something to the group, you can create a presentation issue. Um, and then we have these two things called proposals and suggestions. Right? The, um, these are pretty similar. The only major difference is that proposals are something that you wish to drive yourself. So like, I have a really cool idea. I have the bandwidth to kind of lead a certain effort or I'm willing to put in the effort. Um, then I will create a proposal. If you have like, you know, I have this cool suggestion, a cool idea, but maybe I'm not the best person to do this, or I don't necessarily have kind of the time or resources to put into it then I, I create a suggestion. Um, and we, we have kind of like ways that we handle this. Like if you look into any of these things, for example, if you want to create a presentation, to kind of be a checklist, you know, schedule a date, um, open the issue and kind of acknowledge the, the kind of guidelines, presentation guidelines, things like that. So everything kind of, at least ideally, we, um, we put every, as much as we can within the issue. Um, but, you know, if you are still curious about, you know, how all these things were formulated, we have a governance folder and basically all the most of the processes that happen to do is in this governance folder. So if you are, and then if you just like kind of look at the different directories of the group, we have assessment, these are the assessment and reviews. Um, so talk a little bit about it. Uh, you can go to the guide, which tells you what the review is about, how it's done, how to be part of it, uh, and so on. And then we have, um, so here we have, you know, what are the different steps of the review, uh, what are the different roles of the review, how to be a project lead, how to be a security reviewer. Um, and then you can click on it and kind of like go through, okay, what does it mean to be a reviewer? Uh, what um, do we need as um, review what the expectations of time and so on. Um, so this is, we have basically this, and then if you want to see the documents that end up coming out from reviews, uh, we do have uh, projects and they can kind of go to different ones here, right? Um, so in this case, you see a cognitive build back review, uh, and they can kind of take a look at this and then take a look at the self-assessment and go through, you know, um, just browse on everything that you need. So this is the general layout. So what you will see is that this kind of like maps onto most of the things that, that are in the repo. So it's the same thing with uh, security practice, right? 
security white paper will have the white paper itself, the details of the white paper, but they also have information on, you know, how do I how do I um, contribute to particular uh, particular artifact that's in there. Um, yeah, so I would say kind of like you know just explore the repo, see what if there's anything interesting to you or helpful to you, kind of take a look at that. Um, one other important thing that I kind of want to um, point out before I, I give a break to let people ask questions is we have these project tracking form. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, roadmap and planning to 2021 to 22. So this is kind of where we have like on the all the way on the right hand side. Okay, here are things that are currently ongoing. These are like the bigger projects that you know we we just did the updates and check ins on. Um, you know, cognitive security white paper, supply chain reference, um, reference architecture working group. Um, so you can kind of see like here are some of the big, big ticket items that are going on. We have things that are penned and scheduled, we have things that are proposed, and the, the idea is you know, these um, whenever a, a project or an issue starts gaining momentum, we uh, and get big size um, enough to take on projects and then we you know, start managing them this way. Um, other than that, if you go look at uh, this section, which is extraordinary section, uh, this is where um, we kind of indicate that, okay, here are some of the things that we discussed as a community, and we think that these are interesting topics that we want to look at in the future. So like audit, uh, auditability, edge and telecom, multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. Um, so if you have an issue that kind of maps onto these kind of things, you know, um, we, we're kind of encouraging um, uh, new ideas and new initiatives within these type of efforts. And we have the regular business, which is security reviews, everything, everything has been done. Uh, but yeah, so, so, so far I've only kind of talked about projects, um, but you know, this is an open source repo. So if you see anything like there's a typo, you know, feel free to just open the PR, someone will look at it, um, we'll merge it in, and so on. Um, so, let's, do we have any questions? Cool. All right, if not, I think that, um, we can talk about the chaos engineering self-assessment context. You want to give a quick overview of that, maybe like uh, five minutes, um, get some feedback, and then we can follow up on this. Sure. I think I was on mute. Um, uh, I think. Uh, the project itself, probably I'll just give you a couple of minutes snapshot on what this chaos project is about and then where we are at today. Um, what we focused on in the self assessment doc and um, based on that, we can probably go ahead and decide how we want to go about the next steps. So as far as the project is concerned, um, it's, it is a chaos engineering project as, as you can see from the name. Chaos engineering has been around for a while now, it's been, I think, a decade or so since Netflix introduced the first Chaos Monkey. But um, there have been some changes in the way chaos engineering is practiced in the community. And with the introduction of the cloud native paradigm, there have been a lot of uh, changes in both the philosophy of chaos engineering as well as the way it is practiced on a day to day basis, the, especially with uh, all the re architecture to microservices, usage of Kubernetes as the deployment environment. And um, Litmus started as um, a project to serve the resilience testing needs of another CNCF sandbox project called OpenEBS, which is a containerized storage solution. And I think over a period of time, we generalized it, uh, found a lot of use for it in the community. It acquired a roadmap of its own, and it's uh, in uh, significant usage and adoption today. And um, this project was started somewhere in around 2018 timeframe. 
and um, we sandboxed it uh, in June 2020 last year. And since then, there's been a lot of interest in the project in terms of uh, contributions as well as uh, adoption. And we are looking at um, going to incubation at this point. And uh, as part of that, we uh, tried and filled up the security self-assessment document as per the instructions in the uh, repository, tax security repository guide. And there are a few aspects that we've focused on uh, in terms of uh, the runtime policies. There are some chaos experiments which will ensure that uh, uh, the pods carrying out the fault business logic need to run with some amount of privilege, privilege escalations. So how do we manage that? And um, there are also um, uh, architectural decisions we made to further or uh, keep, keeping security in mind. For example, each of the experiments run as part of uh, the chaos suite uh, can be run with a specific service account and uh, you could control what permissions the experimenter or the, the user is going to be interested with to carry out faults. And there are different modes of execution. There's um, a namespaced mode with lower uh, levels of uh, capabilities and the permissions, whereas there's an admin mode, which is sort of all encompassing. So this account is interested to the user to do chaos in the cluster. There are other features uh, which we've mentioned inside of the self-assessment document, both uh, features that are security related and features that are uh, relevant in terms of security, but not by themselves security features. And also the roadmap, uh, which talks about uh, what we're planning to do in terms of making this better. Um, so we'd like to uh, seek your feedback and uh, guidance in terms of um, what you feel is missing, uh, what can be improved, uh, as also um, how do we go about uh, documenting this in a better way. So this effort also actually helped us, the, the process of creating the self-assessment also helped us in creating a coherent uh, document around security for the end users of the project as well. A lot of the documentation around security was in various places, which is now concentrated into one artifact. So th th that has already been helpful. So looking forward to more uh, feedback and guidance around this. I'd be happy to present the final level details of uh, what the features are um, whenever we are uh, sort of given an opportunity to do so. Awesome. Um, do we have any questions for Karthik? So I have um, attached the link to the due diligence document for the project. Um, and uh, I'd just like to mention, I think Aradhana is also here. Um, so there is an initiative going on called as um, Chaos Engineering Working Group. It's a very recent working group that was started um, so to bring together interested members on a single platform to discuss what is the state of uh, chaos engineering today in the cloud native world and uh, what are the best practices uh, people follow in terms of ensuring resiliency, which also includes best practices, uh, security best practices. And there's also a category of chaos experiments coming up called as security chaos experiments you could have uh, predefined workflows that you can run uh, as part of Litmus, which will um, give you information on probably what's lacking in terms of uh, security. There are a good number of open source tools, which also I see are documented within the cloud native security map, um, which talk about um, highlighting vulnerabilities. So you could run some workflows from the, the Litmus platform to sort of identify what those issues are as well. Um, but coming back to this working group, it's, it's a cross project effort. There are other projects in the CNCF landscape that also um, have chaos engineering at uh, their core. And it's a cross tag, cross project kind of an effort that we've just got started with. The end goal being a white paper that captures 
uh, in the current state of uh, chaos engineering cloud native and what these practices are, how people are approaching it. We're uh, inviting some end user presentations around getting more, gathering more details uh, around how folks are practicing it and then putting that information in a crystallized form in the white paper. So uh, I'll just share the link here on the chat and uh, feel free to join the, uh, the working group if you're interested in the chaos engineering. Awesome. With this question um do you have a way of testing some of the actual uh upstream cloud dependencies like i de i might have a dependency on s3 do you have a way to simulate uh downtime in, in s3 in your in your environment by any chance yeah so the the, the platform as of today um the litmus platform has a set of uh, off the shelf um, readily usable experiments, most of which simulate some kind of Kubernetes faults, as also go ahead and cause some failures on uh, resources uh, in the cloud. For example, using some EC2 instances of Azure uh, scale sets or things like that, where you can go ahead and cause faults. Uh, but we've also written up uh, or designed the architecture uh, in a way in which you can write custom experiments. Let's say the use case that you're just talking about, where you simulate uh, an S3 interface and uh, cause some chaos. So let me support something called BYOC and bring your own chaos where there is a, a tool provided to sort of bootstrap or scaffold your experiment and you can fill in a business logic that uh, uh, you would like to. And it, it serves as both a, a platform or a framework to execute chaos experiments and also providing a ready set of uh, experiments or a library of experiments that you can already do. So uh, this is great suggestion. We do not have that capability right now, but that's something that we can definitely consider tonight. Yeah. And some background on this. Uh, this back in uh, early Netflix days, uh, early uh, 2011, 2012 ish, uh, they had built up uh, in their service mesh, uh, Hystrix was the name of it, uh, the capability to inject that kind of chaos so that it wasn't just them checking uh, services that they depended on or their own infrastructure, but they could inject uh, failures into things like, uh, uh, like, hey, let's, let's stop issuing out workloads for this region and see how the system responds. Or let's, uh, let's start uh, shutting down S3 ac access in certain areas, or let's slow down the network in certain spaces on a, on a random basis. So uh, it's, it sounds like you're, the fact that you're thinking of bring, of the bring your own chaos as, as part of that uh, definitely heads down that particular path. And yeah, I would love to see something like that continue to, to progress as a, as a suggestion. Of course, uh, nothing ever has to sure. be done, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. There are some experiments we're seeing this in the community. Um, one of the reasons for one of the benefits of having uh, it uh, as um, there's something called the chaos hub um, i'm just posting the link here it is basically an open marketplace or catalog of experiments and there are community folks who are basically contributing more experiments into this one of the ways in which people are trying to simulate faults in a hybrid environment where you control some part of the infrastructure and there's something running in the cloud service, for example, is to interface, uh, is, to, is to cause loss of access or cause some kind of slowness and by introducing faults at the boundaries. For example, you could uh, do something like not you're not able to access the S3 backend or maybe things are becoming too slow for you to store inside of a SQL server that you're hosting on Azure. Um, so things like this can still be executed as part of litmus. We're getting in some contributions there. Um, so this is a def definitely a developing area. We, we are seeing chaos being practiced in environments that are not, uh, let's say, only Kubernetes or only pre-Kubernetes. It's like a mix of all sorts of environments. So there are different tests that are uh, coming in to address this need. Yeah, I'm kind of curious at kind of um, the different security use cases and also, you know, whether um, 
your litmus as a project is kind of whether that's a focus or is it kind of just like another use case and the main focus is really around uh, residency type stick. Um, I, I think I lost the first part of the question. I'm sorry about that. Could you please repeat? Yeah, so, so just kind of my question is whether there's a particular focus on security or is it kind of just like more, more of a broad, broad tool? Yeah, it's got a, a, a broader uh, goal. It's about uh, helping SREs and developers with uh, improving the resiliency of their applications. So security is definitely one big part of it. Um, it has all sorts of um, chaos experiments um, that are sort of being developed. Um, experiments that are testing the, the storage um, in the ecosystem experiments that are testing the general uh, application uh, performance experiments that are basically testing network resiliency okay. and security, of course. Yes. Cool. So I guess just a, just a logistical question. Do you have a TLC sponsor for incubation there? Yes. Um, DIMS is uh, the TOC sponsor for uh, DIMS. There is Davanam Srinivas is the TOC sponsor for this project. And um, we've had a few uh, rounds of user interviews that have been conducted at this point. And um, I think he, he, he is basically doing the due diligence. Awesome. Thank you. And, and Bra Brandon, we are also working on a security white paper. Uh, Karthik, sorry, I didn't recognize your full name, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I've been talking to Karthik um, about this um, effort. So um, from a security standpoint, there are a number of use cases that we can actually test with Litmus. A um, lot of attack patterns that come from MITRE, right? I want to start executing them and see how resilient an environment is, right? Um, a cloud or cloud native platform. So um, we can take the list and you know start executing on that and test Litmus against those. That is... Um, that what do you think like we can a, use it for? Yeah. That sounds like a cool presentation to have, just say. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So to be able to execute and see where you are able to kill the attack in the kill chain, right? That'd be really good to know. Awesome. Yeah, I think if if there seems to be interest in, in this, um, I think that, uh, you know, if we have kind of a couple of security use cases and we can do, do like a quick demo on, on, stuff, uh, on how we can use that with security use cases, it would be really cool. And if not, people will, will find it um, interesting and try it out. Sure. I've just posted the link of the, um, the Chaos uh, Engineering Working Group Charter. It's um, in the initial stages, um, so you can, you can find some more details on what the goal is uh, with this working group. And Litmus is one of the contributing uh, projects uh, here. So is, and, that a, um, uh, is that a tag which, okay, is that a tag that you see this being a, a kind of like uh, pop up or is this kind of- Yeah, it's part of app delivery. Okay. Yeah. Um, but security is just one of the stakeholders, right? Obviously, yeah. resiliency, disaster recovery, and all that. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, I'll just verify that. Awesome. Uh, okay, cool. So I think we have 10 minutes left. So um, thanks so much, Patrick, for, for sharing this. Um, let's, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, we'll discuss with Matthew to see what the time that looks like, and then we will get back to you. Assessments. Okay. Um, Thank you. So we also need to do a security assessment of Litmus, I would think. I don't want to use a tool which is not secure by itself, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, let, let's let's see where we are, and also kind of like the the stage of incubation. I think we have currently like three projects that are are kind of on the list. It's um, Argo, Captain, and um, now Litmus, right? So. Um, we, we have to plan out, we'll talk to the TSC, see whether there's any urgency with certain projects that are a bit 
closer to integration. Um, or, you know, which one is, which one is, is a priority for them, right? Um, which one is, uh, has security being a higher priority that the DOC wants, wants feedback on? Um, yeah, so, so we'll figure that out. Um, and then we will try and schedule something. Um, cool. So I think that we, we have a couple of announcements before we end, and then I, I kind of wanted to um, do a quick, quick um, ask to see whether there's anything in that coupon that was interesting for folks that we potentially want to see or see whether we want to get a project to talk about. Um, so before that quick announcement, we have um, Pushka, do you want to take a quick spiel on how we debate? Yes, so welcome new members and existing members. Just a quick reminder, as part of the feedback from the retrospective for white paper, one of the things our end users asked was, tell us how to make our apps that are cloud native secure by default. And from that, what came up is one simple three-pager document, which has guiding principles on what we can do to make cloud native apps secure by default. So here's a link for this. I added in the chat and the meeting minutes has a link to the GitHub issue as well. The document is still open for public comment, but it's going to be closed in four days. So end of this month. So this is your, maybe the last chance to get in your feedback and your comments and let us know if something makes sense, something doesn't make sense, or if we should edit something out. I'm hoping to publish this in some way or form in future for larger consumption for everyone who is under CNCF umbrella and for projects like Litmus Chaos and others that are also in different stages of graduation. So let us know, add a comment on the Google doc, uh, whatever you have, if you have suggestions that you have, feel free to make suggestions directly in the doc as well. It should be accessible to everyone uh, with or without Google account. So that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Pushka. Um, okay. The other quick reminders that what I'd like to put up is we have the community at least nomination out after the, the link to the site message. Um, just close this in two days. So if you have anyone that you'd like to nominate as a tech lead for the community, um, please do send an email and post the instructions on that. Um, one last quick one is on um, Axel sent out a poll uh, around whether we want to have um, the, the changing the cadence of the meetings and some proposals that um we're gonna just post that again in the Slack channel. If you haven't responded to that, please do um put your opinions in that. And then we will figure out the schedule for the upcoming meetings. Um yeah, other than that, um I think just any any thoughts or anything interesting that we may want to cover on future meetings or want to get presentations on that people saw at KubeCon. I, was, I was just want to say thank you, Brandon, yeah, for bringing that up. And uh, and yeah, please make your voice heard and I'll post the, the poll again in the chat. Awesome. If not, if we don't have anything, then we'll give everyone seven minutes back. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Thanks. Thanks, Brandon. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.